like a pro. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs>
I was the sun was going in and out so at different points you'll see different flashes of her color being a little bit brighter than other times but that's because that's just the way the lighting was decided to be on our side that day but you know it was fine it worked out but you can see that it's nice and vibrant you know already I haven't even really done uh, done anything but shampoo it and stuff and um, use my heat protectant of course y'all know it's the Mazzani Miracle Milk I love that stuff swear by it live by it it is it's 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 it does exactly what it says it's gonna do and I have seen it work for literally all hair textures so if you don't have that make sure you add that to your um, to your product cabinet <laughs> So now I am detangling Sharifa's hair, getting her prepped and ready to go ahead and get her blow dry thoroughly. And I am taking my time ensuring that I'm getting all the tangles out. And I'm using the stretch method because Sharifa's hair is a little on the dry side. Um, her hair hasn't been lubricated um, and it's not as moisturized as I would like it to be. So I am using... Um, I'm using high tension, um, the maximum tension rather, to ensure that her hair stays nice and stretched out because it's not moisturizing. It is lacking lubrication and that is because of um, just the styles that she has uh, chosen to wear over the past couple of years. You know, the braids and keeping it locked up and stuff in a protective styles and this is just a side effect of that, so no problem. I just made sure to um, treat her hair with an intensive repair mask after coloring it to go ahead and get her started on her road to moisturize healthy strands. And um, I see I am being very generous with everything I'm using, even this oil. Y'all, this is actually a new bottle. They decided to put my favorite oil in, and I can't stand this bottle. So I dumped all of it in my other bottle. Well, not really dump it. I actually just switched out the tops uh, because it was giving me a, a complete headache. But at any rate, um, I am being very generous with my serums because she needs it, you know. So whenever I feel like the hair is just soaking up the oil, I'll apply a little bit more. And with um, hair that is has high porosity, this is normal. So this is not anything that I'm not used to seeing with people who wear a lot of braids and don't really get a chance for their natural oils to lubricate their strands. This is a natural side effect and it can be easily corrected with the right care and stuff. So I wanted to discuss 4C here today because I received um, a comment or it might have been an inquiry. I forgot which method I saw. Um, I, I received this, I guess, you could, I guess you should say information, but they were basically get into the fact that, oh, do I even do 4C hair? Um, because they don't see, this person was saying, they don't see me do a lot of 4C hair on my channel and or on my page. And when I tell you, I was just stopped in my tracks because I was like, <laughs> uh, maybe 60% okay I, let's just let's take it down a notch just for just to just to be on the safe side 50 to 60 percent of the people that i do have kinky hair it's just that most of what you see on my youtube channel my client's hair is traditionally heat trained or um it might be on the coily side even but even still you always see healthy type four hair um, on my channel and I also wanted to make sure that I communicate to you guys that it is very important that you do not de reduce your hair or deduce your hair to a curl pattern that doggone chart that I don't know who came up with with the 3a 3b 3c crap stuff when I tell you it's the most useless chart I have ever seen of, heard of in my whole entire professional career of doing hair because it doesn't help you with anything. All it does is let you know what your curl pattern is, but your texture doesn't reside in your curl pattern. Your texture resides in how many strands you have on your head and how thick those strands are that's what determines your texture 
So to just merely say, well, my hair is kinky, that's not enough because your hair can be kinky and fine and thin. Your hair can be kinky and have medium porosity hair and uh, let's just say uh, thick as far as uh, how dense it is. I mean, there's so many different combinations that you can come up with. So, you know, let, I, I try to get everybody to get away from, well, I have 4C hair. You, you know, you don't get to tell me you have 4C hair because that doesn't mean anything. All it is, all you're doing is describing your curl pattern. I'm looking at your porosity. I'm looking at how moisturized your strands are. I'm looking at how much hair you have on your head. I'm looking at so many things. I'm looking at your scalp, how healthy is your scalp. I'm used, looking at if you're vitamin deficient. If you're going through hormonal changes, if you're aging, I'm looking at um, if you travel to come see me because different regions of the world, people's hair grow different. You know, that's even a factor, you know, <laughs> a huge factor. You know, people that get a lot more vitamin D tend to have more hair growth, you know, seriously, like it, it can get really, really detailed. So. I just want us to just be a little bit more educated when it comes down to um, our hair. And, you know, um, I, I, would, I would like for everybody to have a broader perspective when it comes down to trying to figure out what their hair type is. And, you know, if you need to seek the assistance of a, of a stylist, um, of a professional, then do that, you know. Um, but for God's sakes, guys... Um, that chart is just, it, it's almost useless. I'm just going to be clear. Like you almost absolutely don't need it because your curl pattern is just that. It's just a curl pattern. That's all it is. You know, it's just, it's decoration, but the science lives in the hair strands. So, um, a lot of what we know about textured hair is, is wrong. It's inaccurate. You know what I mean? And you really, really, really have to be mindful of um, methods and stuff you use so you don't cause further damage. So um, not to get too deep off into that topic, I want to go ahead and start trimming Sharifa's hair. And I went ahead and I showed her about how much we was going to have to come off. And as you saw, she was just like, okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get all these bad ends off. And it really wasn't as bad as what I was expecting it to be. But at any rate, y'all, a trim goes a long way. And again, trimming affects your porosity. Um especially when it comes down to color treated hair if your hair is color treated you cannot afford to go without a trim you have to keep your ends clipped i mean you have to or nine to ten times you will experience some level of breakage um you have to get routine trims when your hair is color treated especially if you want it to continue to flourish and to grow and oh look at her hair color it is so pretty the way that sun is hitting her hair like that, that looks really good. And we did not pre-lighten it at all. We just used developer and color, single process. Nice and vibrant and rich. And this is not even in direct sunlight. So imagine when she gets outside. Oh, I can't wait. I told her to send me some pictures and stuff uh, when she gets all dolled up. So yeah, that's looking good. So anyways, I'm just going through making sure I trim all of her ends off and I'm not really trying to create too much shape in it. I'm just following her natural shape and I'm just following the breakage. So I look typically look for patterns in the hair when I'm trimming and um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You can see it kind of, you know, you can see the lines and you can typically see how, how a person's hair grows. And so I just like to follow those lines. I don't too much uh, try to create something. I just follow what's already there and just follow your natural um, your natural uh, shape of your head and I just see how it's growing and I just try to snip at what I see naturally don't really try to grow in and do anything extra unless I'm asked to so um that's pretty much it when it comes down to that guys and let me go ahead and jump back on the subject of this 4c situation because um it's really really important for us to uh how can I say this? I guess what I'm essentially saying regarding the 4C is 
all hair is good hair and it's a shame that we kind of live in a society where people with 4C hair as you all uh, some of you all like to call it have been shamed and shunned um for your hair type you know little girls get the oh no what kind of hair she got you know her hair is not like such and such hair like I've I've heard those comments from from people who um, the, the children who have the, the kinkier or the tight, more coily hair, you know, people just act like they just don't know what to do with it, or they just look at it like it's some strange foreign object or like a spectacle. And I, I just think that's a shame. I really, really do. And this is just coming from a professional opinion. Um, I know we, when we know better then we should do better. So this is not meant to, you know, try to bash anybody or anything like that but um I just really want us to be a little bit more delicate around the topic of 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 different curl patterns and stuff because that's all it is it's just a curl pattern like just because your hair is wavy doesn't mean it's healthy doesn't mean that your hair is better doesn't mean that your hair can do more um than a person with tighter uh coilier hair and um, the only difference is that different curl patterns might require different methods in terms of care because, again, uh, when it comes down to moisture, moisturizing and lubricating your strands, uh, the curlier or the tight, the more tighter curl your hair is naturally, the longer it's going to take your natural sebum to get down that hair strand. So sometimes applying a light oil to just the ends of your hair sometimes can help out so 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 much especially when you are wearing your hair in more natural styles but that's a whole nother topic that's a whole nother video um i'm just trying to get the point across that there's no such thing as a 4c 4b 4a it doesn't matter guys it doesn't matter the health is what matters that is the only thing that matters is the health of your hair and i have seen healthy hair and unhealthy hair on all different types of hair textures on all different types of lengths um it different ages it does not matter um it's how you care for your hair and that's and, and that's really all that matters guys it's really it's really no deeper than that so Again, I am that stylist. I push uh, relaxers if you need one. And if you don't need one, then I say you don't need to get a relaxer. You need to keep your hair natural if that's what's best for you. Um, because at the end of the day, if you don't know how to take care of it, and if you don't know how to do what's best for your hair to keep it flourishing and thriving, then what does it matter? You know, like... You have, you have to know what you're doing. You have to be confident waking up, styling your hair and whatnot. So, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to go on a tangent about that because I'm sure y'all know by now that I will because I am, an, I am a healthy hair advocate and I want everybody's hair to just to be healthy. But, um that looks like different things for different people but if you don't get anything out of this video understand that uh it it don't matter about no type four and stuff like if if somebody know what they're doing with hair if somebody specializes in hair care they're gonna know what they're doing across the whole entire spectrum across the whole board kinky uh curly wavy straight doesn't matter about the curl pattern if they understand hair care it your curl pattern won't matter so we are just about done with uh sharifa's hair and as like i said i am being very generous with the serums and the moisturizers and the um and when i say moisturizers i mean just like the serums and stuff i'm going to take her fresh silk press and i'm going to wrap it up real real nice and tight and i'm gonna sit her under a cool dryer for about 10 minutes so her cuticles can get nice and sealed and tight and um, i want all these oils to be able to start traveling down the ends of her hair down her entire shaft so we can start this lubrication process 
And it's going to make a big difference because with her porosity being high starting out, that means her cuticles were um, were raised. And so everything I've been doing um, from the beginning up until now is to ensure that her cuticles start relaxing and get nice and tight. And so that means I'm having to stretch it out more, apply maximum tension and for this to be her first silk press and God knows how long, her hair came out so beautiful. And I was so happy we went with this color because this is going to be nice and low maintenance for her. Something that she can keep up. It was The color wasn't aggressive. She got that nice pop of color that she wanted with less than half the damage. And oh, she was just so excited, guys. Y'all, she was just so cute and... That's why I do what I do. I love to see people happy and what's naturally theirs. Like, I just love that. And, yeah, she she just looked like them a million bucks. I was, I was more than happy, happy to send her back home to New York with this new do. <laughs> so, yeah, we won. We won. Again, thank y'all so much for watching. Um, if you're new here, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And if you're returning, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. And I will see y'all in my next video. Very good, right. And when the light hits it, oh my God. Mm -hmm.